Hey friend, I've been playing around a lot with chat GPT because it's all the rage right now. And I figured that I would also do some experiments on how maybe it could help us as songwriters. Overall, I don't think that is anything particularly revolutionary, specifically when it comes to songwriting, but there are some uses that I found that I think could be helpful. So one of the things it does seem to be pretty good at is for getting song prompts. You can ask it something fairly specific, asking for subject matter, song title idea, key, beats per minute, instrument to write your song with, and it will very quickly come up with as many song prompts as you ask for. I'm sure there are some limits, but we'll do 10 for this example. All right, so I did speed up the video so that you weren't bored just watching ChatGPT do its thing, but it took around 30 seconds in real time to come up with these 10 different prompts. And as you can see, it does come up with a subject matter. Some of them are a little more specific than others. And then also a song title idea, as well as the key, a beats per minute idea, and an instrument. And you certainly could combine these too, right? For example, you might think, oh, nostalgia for childhood, that actually is a subject matter I'd like to tackle. And maybe you do kind of like the song title, Innocent Days, at least as a starter song title. But then you think, well, I don't really want to write in C major. I want to do G major because I'm a guitarist and I prefer G major. So of course you could swap things out. The idea here is not that you would use one of these directly. This should be obvious, but I'll say it anyway, right? This is just a good starting place. This is a good way to sort of get the juices flowing creatively so that you have some ideas to work off of. It probably would be very rare that ChatGPT gives you something that in and of itself is already pretty good and you don't really need to develop it further. That's probably unlikely, but I think it could be helpful to view it as instead of having to talk to another person and have a long conversation, thinking through different song ideas and have somebody around to bounce ideas off of. Instead, you can just ask chat GPT and it can sort of help be a almost person on the other side that can just give you some ideas and then you can iterate on ideas from there. And you also can get even more specific, like limiting it to piano, guitar, bass, and organ when it comes to what instrument you would write the song with, because maybe you just play those three instruments really, and then organ, I assume at this point is probably just, hey, you have an organ sound and you like utilizing it, but overall you're just playing it on a keyboard like you are for the piano stuff as well. So you can give it limitations as well. All right, so again, I did speed up the video, but it took probably around 30 seconds. And the beauty of this is you can ask it for something specific like Roman numeral chord progression, which then allows you to not be constrained to a certain key. Instead, it just gives you a one, six, four, five, and then you can put that in any key. For example, taking this top chord progression in D major, that would be D major, B minor, G major, A major. And then for song title ideas, I specifically asked for five song titles for each idea. And then I also specifically asked for an instrument and I said to limit it to piano, organ, bass, and guitar. And as you can see here, it did in fact limit the instrument to those four. So this can be really useful if you're like me, you play a few different instruments and sometimes you like starting your song with different instruments. Sometimes I like starting a song with a guitar, sometimes with a piano. They just inspire me differently in the same way that you would be inspired differently if you probably played violin or oboe or ukulele, because certainly you're probably not gonna come up with a ukulele part that's very similar to a guitar part, especially if it were an electric guitar that you were playing. So this can be really quite useful, again, just for idea generation. And there's honestly some pretty solid song title ideas in here. Dreamers Lullaby, Echoes in the Wind, Rising Tide, Sacred Vow, Cathedral Bells. All those are actually pretty solid starts. Or Sunrise Serenade, Memories Last is okay. Goodbye Again is a pretty solid song title. Bittersweet Memories, Golden Hour, Drifting Away. Starry Nights, Endless Horizon. Actually, what's funny about that is that's actually a song title idea that I have in my idea document that I came up with a while ago and still haven't really done anything with, which then leads us to the second thing that it can be good for. It can be good for iterating on song title ideas. 
So you could ask ChatGPT something like, All right, so this prompt took slightly longer. It probably took about a minute, but there is some really great stuff in here. The fact that it just has endless horizons with plural horizons, and then it explains how pluralizing the title gives it a broader and more expansive feel. And honestly, I agree. It does actually give it a more expansive feel. I think I might like endless horizons more than just endless horizon with horizon being singular. And then another really interesting thing is when they add the, and they just make it the endless horizon. Adding the to the beginning of your song title is actually a really effective tool sometimes. Let's say you have a song that's all about a tiger. Something about the tiger versus just tiger as a song title, usually I find is way more resonant. Like which one? What do you mean the tiger? What is so important about the tiger? Whereas if you just call it tiger, it kind of falls flat, but just adding the to the beginning of something sometimes makes it a little bit more profound. And again, they describe here why the endless horizon, saying adding the definite article to the original title gives it a more definitive and specific feel, as if the song is about a particular horizon that extends forever. And that really can make a huge difference. A song that I've been working on recently is called The Wanderer. And I honestly think that The Wanderer is a way better title than simply Wanderer, even though the only difference is the word the. So this is certainly something that ChatGPT is quite good at, is helping to iterate on song title ideas. To go a little bit farther with this, we also can ask it to just come up with song titles on its own based on a prompt. All right, this one was actually really fast, probably took about 10 seconds. And here, right away, are a bunch of different ideas to start with for a song that is asking yourself why you still aren't happy when you should be. The Elusive Pursuit, that's actually pretty solid. Hollow Happiness, The Weight of Expectations, Joyless Victory, these are actually some pretty solid starting places. And then, of course, from here, we can take maybe what our favorite is, let's say the elusive pursuit, and then we could ask it to iterate on that idea farther. Or we could do something like this. And right there, within about 20 seconds, we went all the way from giving me song titles about asking yourself why you still aren't happy when you really feels like you should be, all the way to now we have 10 titles that are all off of our favorite title of the first list that it gave us. And we're sort of narrowing in on maybe what we might be looking for in a song title. And again, I wouldn't expect that ChatGPT ever gives you the song title that you want, but certainly it can get you closer and closer. And then you do some final workshopping and it can just be a great assistant in the quest to creating a great song title. And the last thing that I wanna talk about is really just asking for chord progression ideas. I'm not a huge fan of starting a song off just with a chord progression. I think there are much better ways to start songs, like with a piano riff or a guitar riff or a melody. But ultimately, a lot of people do opt to start their songs with chord progressions. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. It's just a little bit limiting in my opinion. But let's say that you do want to start with a chord progression, but you actually want to have some different chord progressions and not just use the same ones over and over again. So you could give it a prompt like this. And again, that took about 20 seconds, maybe even less, maybe 10. And right there, there's four different chord progressions to give a shot to. And specifically, it also calls out that that first chord progression is used in many sad songs in a major key, including Someone Like You by Adele. Now, I don't know if that's actually true off the top of my head, but in this instance, I'm just going to assume that it's true. That could be super helpful. Maybe you think to yourself, oh, I really like that song. Maybe I should use that chord progression. Or maybe you're like, I don't want to use that chord progression then because that's not exactly my favorite song, which chord progressions only affect a song so much the melody and the lyrics affect it way more, so you probably wouldn't write it off just based on this. But it also gives you some helpful tips for things like in the key of C major, this would be C, A minor, F major, and then G major. So chat GPT can give you some ideas for chord progressions in a way that really nothing else can because you can specifically ask it 
for things like I want it to be in a major key, but I want it to be a chord progression for a sad song. Or maybe I want something in Phrygian and I want it to sound aggressive. And you can ask it these questions and it will come up with at least some solid results to start out with and try. And it'll be way quicker than Googling and probably Googling will get you the same four answers over and over again. Whereas with ChatGPT, you can specifically ask for different chord progressions and then you can also ask for more rare chord progressions. You can do things like that in case it keeps giving you results that you've already tried. You can do a lot with ChatGPT for generating ideas for your song. It never will be a good replacement for the actual artistry. Of course, you're still going to have to write lyrics if you want to have actually decent lyrics. If you've tried having ChatGPT write lyrics, then you know, or if you watched my last video on this, that it really is not very good at writing lyrics unless you want the most pedestrian, unmemorable lyrics imaginable. But it certainly is something that can be a useful tool for us as songwriters to leverage when we are in the stage of generating ideas. Could almost be a replacement for having a co-writer in the sense that we have someone in quotes, to bounce our ideas off of. Just in this case, we don't have to rely on being able to get on the phone with that person or being able to meet them in person. We can just go to our computer, type in a few things, and we basically have our virtual co-writer or our virtual collaborator. So if you're wanting to dive right in and start writing some songs, be sure to check out my free guide on 10 different ways to start writing a song. It gives you five ways to start a song from a musical standpoint and five ways from a lyrical standpoint, specifically the lyrical standpoint stuff will pair really well with what we talked about in this video today. Be sure to check it out. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. Talk to you in the next one.